everybody, Chef Britt here with ATBBQ.com and today we are making beer ox. For those of you who aren't familiar with what a beer ox is, it's essentially a meat filled pastry similar to a runza where it has German immigrant origins popularized in the Midwest states. But honestly, it's a little bland if you ask me. Um, the meat is usually ground beef and it's cabbage, maybe some onions and garlic. We're gonna change that today. We're actually gonna take a chuck roast and instead of grinding it, we're just gonna smoke it, get a really great flavor that way. We're also going to take our cabbage and we're gonna braise it with some beer and some amazing Dijon mustard. And then we're gonna make our pastry, which is essentially just a yeasted milk dough. And we're gonna give it that extra flavor by firing them off in the Clementi wood-fired oven. Let's hop in. All right, so we've got a three pound chuck roast here. We're not gonna do any trimming on it. We're just gonna go ahead and get it seasoned up with a little bit of this Dijon mustard as a binder. Just a nice thin layer to bring back some moisture to the surface. And then there's also some sort of intramuscular bits right there. Feel free to get some seasoning up in those spots too. Now we're gonna follow up with some of this Killer Hogs all-purpose rub seasoning, salt, pepper, garlic, pretty standard flavors. And we'll season that pretty generously here. All right, and I'm just kind of massaging it in, patting, if you will. Just making sure that all the surface of the meat is coated very well. So we're just gonna allow that rub to hydrate. So once we see that it's not dry anymore, we'll head out to the smoker. All right, so today we're working with the Yoder Smokers YS640S. I filled it up with cherry pellets. You can also use apple as a great option. Um, it's set at 275 degrees, and it's gonna take about four or five hours. All right, and you may have noticed I've already got another one going here just to get a head start on the video for today. All right, so now we're gonna work on our beer braised cabbage filling. Got a half head of cabbage here. I'm just gonna quarter it and core it. And then I'm just gonna come through and slice it pretty thin. Now, I don't want these uh, pieces to be really long and stringy, so I'm just gonna come through and just chop them up a little bit more. Next, I'm going to dice up an onion, and we're just going for about a medium dice on this one. Now we're gonna mince up some garlic. Just start with some rough chops. Just keep going through, passing the knife through until we get it much finer. You can even start to break it down with your knife a little bit. Really open up that garlic. To get this beer braise going, we obviously need some beer. I'm using Free State Lager. Any kind of lager, a Pilsner, or any sort of lighter beer is perfect for this. If you want a more hoppy profile, you can absolutely use an IPA, but it's gonna change the trajectory overall. And I'm gonna do a couple heavy pinches of Jacobson Kosher Sea Salt. And then to ramp up the acidity, we're gonna add some of the Dijon mustard, a couple heaping tablespoons just to get it going. All right, let's just get this going on high heat. Some cracked pepper. and get all of these flavors mingling nicely. I'm just gonna cover it to start. All right, so now that we're boiling, I'm just gonna lower the temp a little bit, about a medium. And we're just gonna let all of this beer cook off. And I'll come back and stir it occasionally. 
once all of the liquid is pretty much cooked off, I'm gonna cut the heat. Now the cabbage is pretty much cooked through at this point, but I'm just gonna let that residual steam do the rest of the cooking. All right. So once everything's just perfectly softened through, a little bit of texture is fine, a little bit of extra moisture is fine. We're going to just cool it down and keep it at bay until our chuck roast is ready to add to it. And just so you guys know, this is actually a double batch. Um, that's just because I have two chuck roasts working, um, so this will be enough for that. Um, otherwise, for that one chuck roast, about half of this recipe will work perfectly. All right, now that we've got our meat smoking and we've got our cabbage made, let's make the dough. We're gonna start by putting just a little over two cups of whole milk right in the bottom of the bowl, and then about 14 grams of instant dry yeast, and we'll just stir this to dissolve. All right, so in the meantime, I'm gonna whisk together my other dry ingredients. I've got 720 grams of my Auntie Mo Caputo chef's flour. I have a couple teaspoons of white sugar and a teaspoon and a half of salt. We'll just get those going together. All right, now that my yeast is hydrated, I'm gonna start adding my flour, just a little bit at a time. I'm moving the arm if I need, just to get it going. All right, I'm gonna just keep adding it until it starts to come together. that dough come together and let that flour hydrate before we crank up the speed and give it some more time to knead. All right, so now I'm gonna turn it up to medium speed and give it about five minutes to knead. All right, let's see how we're doing. So the dough is smooth, it's pretty elastic. We don't have to get any great gluten development, um, but now we're gonna do the bulk fermentation. All right, so to do that, I'm just going to round out my dough a little bit here. Put it in there, and we'll get the cover on. And we'll let that prove for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, or even longer. We're just gonna keep an eye on it. While the dough is resting, the next thing I wanna do is build a fire in my Clementi. Now we're going to use the wood-fired oven to bake our beer ox today, and that's because I love the flavor. We just get a better chew out of the crust from the high temperatures. So let's go ahead and just head on out and build our fire. All right, so I'm gonna use some hickory split wood here from Cattleman's Grill and get our log cabin formation going. I'm gonna put the smaller, thinner pieces on the bottom just so we can get some really good air flow in there. And then these bigger pieces on top. We'll pop a couple lighter cubes in the middle there. And torch it. So we're getting this fire rolling about a couple hours before I intend to bake the beer ox, and the reason why I'm doing that is so that I can have a lot more control over the temperature of the deck. I wanna actually go for a lower temperature rather than a higher temperature, just so we don't end up burning the beer ox. So this is gonna give me a lot more control if I can get ahead of the time. So now it's been about an hour and 15 minutes on our bulk fermentation, let's give the dough a look. So you can see it's doubled in size, so now we're ready to fold it and scale it out. That's a nice, happy, fluffy, pillowy dough there. So I'm just gonna punch it down and get the yeast activity a little more evened out. 
and then we'll scale it. So we're looking for about 85 gram pieces, which should total out 15 rolls in the end. Hey, I'm getting good at this. I'm gonna just round these out. I'm gonna fold them a little bit just to get a little tighter crumb structure. I'm not looking for perfectly sealed bottoms, but just something tight enough to hold its shape while it rests. So if you're having a hard time rolling these on your board or your workspace, they're sliding around, you can use a little water just to get a little gription on your board there. So now I'm just gonna cover these with some plastic wrap and allow them to rest until we're ready to fill them. So just to give you guys some perspective, the internal temperature on the meat right now is at about 160. So I anticipate another hour or two before we're ready to actually fill and shape um, these beer rocks. So I'm gonna hold these rolls in the fridge until we're ready. So now that our logs have turned into embers, I'm gonna go ahead and scooch it on over to the side, the center where the fire was, it's about 750, closer to the side, is much lower. So now we want to try and even this out a little bit more. We'll keep feeding our fire, we'll just brush out all this extra ash. So if you want a hotter fire, put the door in place. Um, if you want a cooler fire, take the door off. So I've got some time to kill and I don't want to burn through all my logs real fast. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep the door closed for now. And about maybe an hour uh, before I'm really ready, I'm going to take that door off and just let it cool down a little bit. I've also got the vent open, which is just going to help keep that air flowing through. All right, so it's been about five hours on the smoker. We're looking for a temperature between 205 to 210 degrees. Let's give it a look. So you shouldn't feel too much resistance. Check that out. We're pretty close to temp. All right, we're gonna just cover these up a little bit. get a little foil tent going on inside and let those rest for about 20 minutes. Now that we've rested our meat, I've also gone ahead and pulled our rolls out of the fridge to let them come to temp so they're more manageable. Um, now we just need to chop up the meat, mix it with our cabbage, and get our pastry filled. Let's just see how it's looking. Yum. So juicy, it's just shredding apart at this point. This is gonna be so good. When I was doing recipe tests on this, everybody asked if I had put brisket into the beer ox. I should have lied and told them I did. That's the beauty of the chuck. It's got the same sort of intramuscular fat and all of that flavor is just gonna meld really well with the acidity and crunch of the cabbage. Now time to mix it all up. This cabbage practically smells like sauerkraut. It's got that nice acidic punch that's gonna cut through the fattiness of this chuck really well. And I'm just gonna kinda massage the meat in and break it down, let it shred a little bit, and it'll all meld together really well that way. Now's a good time to give it a taste as well. This filling is probably the best one I've ever made. It's got the right amount of acidity. The smokiness is really coming through. I'm really stoked, guys. All right, let's get the pastry. So with just a touch of flour, I'm gonna start rolling these out. I'm looking to get about a five inch diameter. And I just like to turn and roll. And really, I'm just pressing on this side just so I can get a thinner edge. We're gonna put somewhere between a third cup and a half cups worth of filling in there. I'm gonna take 
opposite ends. I'm going to bring it up into the center. I'm going to pinch and sort of do the same thing again. Try your best not to tear the dough. And then we're just going to seal by crimping those corners. So we're going for a more square shape in the end. Now you can shape this into circles if you want, but I just like when there's not a ton of dough accumulated at the bottom, and so this is the best way for me to enjoy it. So now I'm just going to expedite this process a little bit and just get all my rounds made. I <laughs> love that little squeaky sound it makes. Let's go ahead and fill a few here. All right, so let's get this tray onto the Clementi. Now, if you're gonna do this in your smoker, I'll go ahead and leave some baking instructions on the blog. All right, I'm gonna check the temperature of the deck here. I have the door off for a while. So my deck is right around 450, obviously pretty warm, close to the fire. So we'll just try and avoid that area so we don't burn our beer rocks. Now, you can put these on a peel, but I'm kind of a brave soul. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put them right in there by hand. I'm gonna put the door on, and we're gonna close the vent. And that's gonna give us the oven spring that we want. It's also gonna help the internal temperature of the filling to come up to temp as well. So after about four or five minutes, you might want to come through and give everything a little turn. These are going to have another minute or two to go. These are looking great. So just for science, we're going to see how we're looking. The filling is warmed through, but if I go down towards the bottom, I'm looking for a temp closer to 195. So I'm going to give that one just a little more time. Again, just a couple minutes, probably won't hurt. These are looking really great. I'm going to go ahead and pull them. have it. Now normally you just let these cool a little bit. Closer to room temperature is a really great way to eat them, but I'm kind of just pumped. Let's just see. Awesome. You can see the doughs cooked through on the bottom. Super succulent and juicy. All these great textures. It's going to be awesome. guys. You know, normally these are served with a little mustard on the side, which you can do that absolutely, but there is so much good moisture coming out of that meat that I'm not even worried about that mustard. And I'll tell you what, guys, this is the best beer rock I've ever had in my life. Not to toot my own horn, but you know. All right, so thanks for joining me today, guys. I know this recipe is a little involved, so if you need some more guidance, head on over to atbbq.com slash the sauce to see all of the recipes, tips, and techniques that Tom and I are making just for you. Also, if you want to see any of the products we use today, head on over to atbbq.com. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.